And now we are going to the last oral presentation before the lunch break. Uh, this is the Berkeley Heights, New Jersey team, also a Mission 6 flight experiment, now going through formal flight safety review. Hello, I'm Julia Ellis. Hello, everyone. I'm Bianca Urbina. Good afternoon. I'm Gia LaSalle. Greetings. I'm Liliana Walsh. And I'm Kasia Kapustka. Our experiment is baby bloodsuckers in outer space. And this has truly been a scientific journey for us. Because, like with any scientific journey, this started off with plan A. But we were constantly finding out that ideas didn't work or needed improvement. We think um, that we are currently at plan G. <laughs> but we haven't even sent our experiment to the ISS yet. So when everything's said and done, we think we'll probably be on plan Z. Next slide, please. So the question that we want to answer today is, will microgravity prevent the 80s albopictus mosquitoes from developing into pupae? Probably. The mosquito's larvae floats to the surface to the float and mature into pupae. Without gravity, the mosquitoes lack a mechanism to float, so they cannot breathe. The mechanism is located in the mosquito's tail, but is ineffective in space because buoyancy does not work with microgravity. Next slide, please. I refer you to the right side of the PowerPoint, which demonstrates the mosquito's life cycle, which always ends with the adults, that we all know and hate. Next slide, please. We will be using a type 3 FME2. In volume one, we'll include dry mosquito eggs and nutrients, which will include brewer's yeast and lab chow, which is just ground up hamster food. The mosquitoes won't be eating the nutrients, but the bacteria the nutrients make. And in volume two, we'll include water and air. In volume three, we'll include fixative, which is 10% neutral buffered formula, which has formaldehyde in it. Preliminary research experiments will be done to determine all the proper amounts for all the mentioned substances. And we're excited and happy to say that we have already begun these experiments. Next slide, please. Um, so once our experiment is launched to the ISS, the eggs will be dry. Water will begin the activation um, for the development of the 80s albopictus mosquitoes once clamp A is released. The experiment will continue nine days because it's towards the end of the mosquito's maturation cycle. This ensures the mosquitoes will have enough time to develop into pupae as well as corresponding with the astronauts' designated experiment interaction days. Then, once the astronauts release clamp B, the fixative will preserve the mosquitoes when they should have matured into pupae. Um, then, once we get our experiment back from the ISS, we will compare the space experiment to the ground truth one we will conduct here on Earth. We are happy to inform you we have already begun our preliminary experiments, which so far have shown that too much food will kill the mosquitoes because it creates a seal on the surface of the water that doesn't allow them to breathe. Next slide, please. So why does this matter? We're going to tell you why it matters. Mosquitoes can serve as a food stock for crayfish and tilapia. On Earth, this may sound normal, but to an astronaut in space, it's pretty awesome. Also, looking into the future, our generation might be colonizing in space. So wouldn't you love to enjoy fresh fish? Next slide, please. We get it. It's hard to envision a test tube of half air and half water. There's no up, no down, no sideways, and no other sideways. In space. Everything feels like you're standing up normally. The sur we think that the surface tension with the test tube will leave air in the center and the water will look like a straw, as shown in the picture. This is interesting because unless the astronauts tell us what actually happened, we will never know. Next slide, please. This is a list of potential confounders, which, in short, is just all the problems and solutions we've faced. Our first problem is a basic one. It's a problem of transportation. Houston, we have a problem. Post offices radiate packages. This will kill all of our mosquitoes before they even get there. If that happens, it wasn't microgravity that killed our mosquitoes. It was the US Postal Service. Our solution to this problem is by shipping FedEx. Our second problem is baker's yeast consumes oxygen during fermentation. 
This will let all of our mosquitoes suffocate. So instead, we're going to use brewer's yeast and keep it dry in volume one. Our third problem is the amount of mosquitoes we can have is limited by the amount of air we have. We're very limited for space in a 10 milliliter test tube. So this is why we chose a strong fixative. If we have a strong fixative, we can use less of it. And that way we can have a bigger volume too and have more mosquitoes. Our last problem is a problem our team likes to call the unknown unknowns. This is a list, uh, this is simply everything that we have not anticipated yet. This is why we're doing the preliminary experiments. It's to hopefully figure out everything we don't know yet and to solve it. Next slide, please. We would like to thank all of our sponsor sponsors and give a, th a special thanks to Todd Livdahl, the professor of biology at Clark University for eggs, nutrients, and special guidance. Next slide. This concludes our presentation. Do we have questions for Berkeley Heights? Just wanted to make one quick comment. Uh, this was a wonderful window on the process of how you design an experiment and the issues that arise and the kinds of solutions and brainstorming that need to occur. I hope you don't have to go all the way to pro, you know, Z. <laughs> Trinity from Tampa, Florida. Uh, why did you use mosquitoes and why, couldn't you have uh, used any other insects in your experiment? Well, um, when we were th first thinking about doing this, we were planning on using sea urchins, but we learned that the eggs are viable for about six hours outside of the female's body. So instead we looked into other insects or small organisms that could fit into the uh, test tube. And we learned that mosquitoes' eggs are viable for about nine months, and that, sh and so we decide to use mosquitoes. Thank you. Jim from Tampa. We have plenty of mosquitoes in Tampa. <laughs> the question is, did you look at the amount of oxygen for the ratio of mosquitoes you're going to have in the test tube? That's one might be one of your confounders. Um, well, during our preliminary experiments, we're testing to see how much. Um, we want to put in the most amount of mosquito eggs as possible. Um, so we're testing to, right now, like over the summer, to see um, how many mosquito eggs we could put in so that they'll all be able to breathe. Michal from Colorado, um, again. Uh, I have, um, do the mosquito eggs um, need to be submerged in water in order to hatch? Um, yes, they do. Um, they they need to ha to start um, growing. They need to be in water, and then the, they just the they have food. So, well, the food is that we're giving is they're not eating that. They're actually eating the um, the bacteria that grows on the food. And do they need to be totally submerged, or do they just need to be um, damp, or you know? Um well, uh, yes, they should be as submerged as possible, but um, uh, we think that they, w they need to be completely submerged, and if they're damp, they won't hatch. Thank you. Miranda from Tampa, Florida. How did you come up with the idea of using a living organism in the first place? Um, well, I told my cousin one day about um, this experiment, and she has a PhD in entomology. And she told me uh, that she was reading an article about sea urchins, like I mentioned before. And she said that we should look into sea urchins, and we did. Thank you. Isabel from Tampa, Florida. Why would you hypothesize that the water will be floating on the out inner sides of the tube instead of in a blob in the middle or two blobs on the ends? Um. Well, in microgravity, there's no up, down, and everything like that. So we think that um, it will just push the water to the sides, and the air will just stay in the center. Because the surface, uh, the surface attention with the test tube should draw the water to the sides, and then there's nowhere else for the air to go. So we think that the air will simply be stuck in the middle. 
Let's thank the Berkeley Heights, New Jersey team.